Maurice. Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 65. Sean Williams, how are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Got some lovely shirts there behind you. Great setup. Yeah, I, I didn't position this camera for them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. this, is, uh, this is the room with all the stuff in it, so. Nice, nice. Um, so, yeah, look, we've got a lot to talk about. It's talking just briefly off camera. Seven years of me will play out. 2014 to 221, 200, over 290 appearances and 22 goals. Some good times there, mate. But also, started out quite rough, didn't it? Yeah, um, amazing times. Um, definitely full part of my family now. Um, but yeah, no, I had some great times and met some unbelievable people who I'm still in contact with today. So mm, Lots. Uh, yeah, and lots. lots. Yeah, lo lot. and loads to talk about. We've got lots to talk about. Before we go into that, obviously you come from Dublin or near Dublin. You played in the Irish League for sport in Fingal, is that right? And other yeah. teams. Yeah. So this is just me as a, as you know, a big Sean Williams fan. Who were your like football idols growing up? Because I, as you know, love the way you play. So who was like you? Uh, were you thirty six? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're younger than me. Yes, you're. Yes, you're sort of six, seven years younger than me. So growing up, who was like your football heroes that you looked up to and aspired to be like? Uh, well, the obvious one being Irish would have been Roy Keane. Um, yeah career speaks for itself and I think every youngster probably my age is similar uh, he would have been someone that everyone looked up to but uh, I support Man United when I was growing up as well so um, yeah it was it was it, it, he would have been kind of the one and then obviously there's Zidane's and stuff like that you know like the flair players who you, mm. you're mesmerised by so um, yeah that no, was definitely probably Roy Keane I'd say He's a fucking great, he's a great pundit as well, isn't he? He, yeah. don't, he don't give a shit, does he? Just oh, literally yeah. dishes it out. I know, it's great. He, he doesn't care, like, you know, he just says how he feels and doesn't even bother about the, the backlash he gets. <laughs> he's a constant meme on, on, like, social media, like Instagram, and he's constantly... Yeah, yeah, he's close. Like Roy, Roy Keane everywhere. But you, you joined Millwall in, on the 27th of January, which is my son's birthday, on a uh, two-and-a-half-year contract, undisclosed fee, MK Dons, Signed by Ian Holloway, is that right? Yeah. Now, obviously, Millwall fans feel the way they feel about Ian Holloway, but players we've had on, uh, Byron Webster and others, they all speak very highly of, of Ian Holloway. He was one, must have been one of his first signings about two weeks after he, he walked in the door. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar, really, to probably what other people have said. Um, crazy man. It's unique character I'd say but um yeah no he was great for me um brought me to Millwall obviously mm. uh him along with Mick Harford who was doing a bit with him at the time and I, I had Mick he was the assistant at MK when I was there for a while um so yeah it was yeah it was a, it was a good time for me to move mm. first impressions of the club a bit different to uh MK oh. Don yeah, contrast are massive. Um, <laughs> as you can probably tell yourself, but yeah, it was there was just a lot more, a lot more people invested in the team and the club and the history that went behind it, um, which is a massive pull for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very. I mean, MK does obviously a spawn of AFC Wimbledon, so that that rivalry is quite intense. But no disrespect to their mid grounds. Constantly half empty, and it's not really a intimidating and pressurised place to play your football. Yeah, I think it's only an up and coming club, really. Um, obviously, they'd only started not not too long ago, so um, they're probably still trying to build their foundations. Obviously, they have their stadium and that, uh, which is top of the range, like you know. So mm. um, hopefully, they can fill it in time. He signed some good players, though, didn't he? Signed you, he signed Lee Gregory. He got some good players through the door, Holloway. Why do you think it didn't work out for him at Millwall? Um, I just think maybe the pressure kind of got to him and he might have dealt with it in the right manner. Mm. Uh, but yeah, obviously, he's, uh, 
his career kind of speaks for itself. He's he's been a manager for a long time, and I'd never really say a bad word against him because he gave me the opportunity to play for the club. So um, mm. yeah, I probably thank him. Can't thank him enough for that. Yeah, definitely. So that first season, the two thousand and 13-14 season, he came in to go from Steve Lomas and we sort of potted around the bottom echelons of the division, finishing 19th. The 2014-15 season actually started off to a flyer. 2-0 win at home to Leeds. You was yeah. on the score sheet, a penalty. Yes. I remember. Yeah. Son's um, first game. Oh, you, your son's first game, your oldest. Yeah, that's you're sure from that game. Oh, was that you there, yeah? Yeah. I've got, you know what, I've got a good photo. I'll put it during the actual edit, but I've got a good photo. Of, I've got a photo of my boy that day, and that's a Euro Ferries one, yeah. Yeah. I a photo of him in the, in the uh, Dockers Upper just, just before you took the penalty. But uh, Lee Gregory won the penalty that day. That was one of the first times I'd seen him. And then sort of as it went on, he become like this lean, hard-working yeah. goal machine. But like, at, at that point, when we first signed him from Halifax, he looked quite like, like a big centre-forward, didn't he? He was like quite... A, yeah, he actually, like he got, he won the penalty. I think through a bit of miscontrol. <laughs> Probably, yeah, pretty bundled his way through. But now he, he, he turned out to be a great sign. Um, he chased a crisp packet in the wind for you, like you know. And, <laughs> yeah, he, he was great. I really enjoyed playing with him. Um, and you knew what you were going to get out of him, one hundred and ten percent every game. Mm. Like, yeah, but so it didn't fucking it didn't work out. Unfortunately, as the season went on. Well, MK yeah. Dons were they league below at this point. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you've come to a championship club, been sold the dream by obviously what the club's about, and then Ian Holloway, and then he ends up getting sacked, loses yeah. his job. Neil Harris comes in temporarily but can't save it, and we end up back where you came from in uh, in League One. Obviously, not part of the plan. It's a stupid question, I know, but what was it like to uh, the feeling of relegation? Was that the first time you've been relegated as a player? Yeah, um, dreadful. Uh, I think obviously last game of the season where you kind of go and greet the fans on the pitch, we, it wasn't an option. Um, so it kind of, yeah, it definitely sank in um, leading up to it. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't, it was obviously the worst part, the worst season of my career um, mm -hmm. in terms of overall result. Um, yeah, like we started the season so well and then, I think we changed the way we were playing a little bit and yeah, it didn't work, obviously. No, you must be thinking, what have I signed for here? But listen, from this point, it's all good news, mate. The 2015-16 season, Neil Harris gets a job on a permanent basis. Three signings through the door. Firstly, Steve Morrison. Is he yeah. as miserable as that will make out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. Um, he was on loan. Uh, under long match when I first came, yeah, and yeah, he was he wasn't playing, um, so yeah, it was difficult then. Then he came back under Chopper and he had a new lease of life, I think. Um, ended up having an unbelievable couple of years, yeah, he did, mate. And also, along with him, come a very she was very new Harris, yes, get Morrison back in and get, get Tony Craig back in as well. He's been on yeah. the show. He fucking an absolute war. He's still playing as well, isn't he? I know. Yeah, still going. Thirty-seven, I think he is. I actually played against him um, like two or three months ago. I think but we had seven hundred like games. He's played or something like seven hundred fifty games. Yeah, I think he played his seven hundred there not so long ago. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he's going strong. Yeah. And a, a player as well who comes to the club for the first time. He really is a bit of a bit of a mate of yours and they end up have, uh, leaving his mark on me all for definitely Jeb Wallace you knew I was going to say that, didn't you yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no um, came as a young lively character and he yeah, turned into an unbelievable player again um, at the Coops game as well he was similar Coops, yeah. yeah, Coops came. He's been there. I think it was six years to, or yesterday. I think the club put out Coops has been there now. Yeah, what a player he's turned out. Yeah, I think yeah. he's fucking great, mate. I think he's quality. Yeah. Yeah, so with those players we mentioned, we end up finishing fourth in the division. We make the playoffs. Yeah. Bradford away. I, I checked this out. You didn't actually start these games, right? 
I didn't have know. To I? Yeah, I think it's probably the, one of the lowest points of my career and probably something I'd regret. Uh, I got sent off, um, played Coventry away, and I got sent off in the first half. We were winning 1 0, and I just I got fined two weeks' wages, and we lost. And it was something that if I could go back, I would have, because then I lost, I would think I was suspended for a couple of games, missed the playoff games um, due to not being picked. And then missed the final, obviously, um, all down to stupidity of an apparent headbutt against Coventry. Apparent. So, so yeah, because we get sent off, you don't always get fined two weeks' wages. The it must have been something bad. I was there. We went one up in the first half from a head yeah. corner. From a corner. Yeah, I think Coop's got. Coop, was it Cooper or, um, yeah, it was one, some of the centre halves. Yeah, and you got sent off. I do remember. I don't remember you getting off sent off at Stoke as well. And you just seemed like you didn't give a fuck when you got sent off at Stoke. You actually got a round yeah, of applause. That, 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 that was a harsh one. Yeah, yeah. But you signed the coverage you almost warranted then, yeah? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> what was yeah, that? A bit, of, if, bit of previous, bit of previous around there. You oh, think? nothing like that. I didn't even know who the lad was. It was um, different hat on the pitch, and um, he tried to come up into my face and through the head in a little bit but uh, it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth it anyway yeah that seemed i mean i remember i might remember this wrong but it seemed a time when you you wasn't really getting in I don't know if it was maybe after that as well and i was thinking he's fucking decent why did you maybe it wasn't really working out for you at that time but i actually what for one point i might leave do you know what i mean <laughs> no nah, yeah that's that was partly the reason why i couldn't get back in the team then um, yeah i think that i can't i was I think got banned for a few games anyway. And then the last game of the season was Gillingham away, apparently, funnily enough. Um, <laughs> and the lads have won. And then the next two were obviously the playoff semi-finals. Yeah. So I wasn't going to change the team because um, we'd done quite well leading up to it. And then the final, obviously, where we got torn apart by Barnsley. Yeah, that was, that was a little bit unexpected, I think. Harris has done brilliant to, to get it back as quick as he did because, as we all have learned in, in previous years, getting out of that League One, we went down yeah. years in like the late 90s, and everyone was like, well, go to League One for an holiday for a year, end up being down in seven. Do you know what I mean? It's not easy to get out. So he no. turned that team around, he turned that team around really quick. He did, yeah. Um, I think as well, because of the, when we lost in the final against Barnsley, it was, it was a, the same kind of core group of players for the next season. Mm. I think it hurt quite a lot. Um, but the next season, then we kicked on after the Christmas and just made the playoffs. Yeah, mate, the next season, 216, 217. The things I've got written down here promotion, goal from the halfway line, FA Cup run, Berry comeback. There's, there yeah. is fucking loads to talk about. Um, let's start with that goal from the halfway line. That was uh, not in a forest. In like, the thing that done you there was it was in a shit cup, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a shit one, yeah. It was a shit cup. Yeah. If that was well, if that was like a, a bigger game, but it was a fucking great goal, mate. I think it's actually inside your own half, aren't you? I think no. I think I won it just inside our half and brought it into their half and then scored. Yeah, but um, I'd only come on as a sub anyway. I think um, I don't even know what score it was when I came on. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so, it was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Promotion aside, promotion aside, that FA Cup run, Watford, Bournemouth. Watford and Bournemouth, yeah, all right, fair enough. But the Leicester game, mate, that was... Yeah, that's, it was That's his story, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that Leicester game. Cooper sent off. Yeah. Really just looking for a replay at that point, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, it was a total underdog game. Um, I think we'd had a bit of confidence leading up to it, but they just won the Premier League. Um, and we got quite lucky as well. All our games were at home, yeah, which, which stood in our favour because nobody really wants to go to the den, do they? No. Especially, especially the team that just won the Premier League. So, um, yeah, I don't think they overly troubled us. And then obviously, we Coops got sent off. I think it just kind of galvanised us a little bit. Um, yeah, it was roider right over kind of stuff, wasn't it? Towards the end. 
Yeah, that was, that was something else. Yeah, it was great. It was great. What's, what's it like from from pitch level when he, when he's rocking in there like that? He was one of the first ones on the scene as well. You give one that's give it that's one to the fans behind the goal, didn't you? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, I think there's not many games I probably don't remember um, at home. Just down to the fact of the atmosphere. Obviously, there's the big games, but even the shitty games are always quite good anyway. Like so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, quality, mate. Okay, so obviously that cup run ended with a game yeah. at White Lane. They were decent when they Spurs. They were all right. Yeah, that was a tough day. Um, it, was a, it was a good experience, but it was a it was a harsh lesson, probably, in where you're kind of at level wise. But they were just mm. a completely different level to what we were used to. And as good as all these cup runs are, but one of the one of the games that always sticks out to me, always will, was was Bury away. Yeah. League one, I think we had English strikers. I think we had, I think we had Alfie Pavey and Harry Smith up front. <laughs> but we, yeah, I'm sure we yeah, did. Uh, Harry Smith came on. We were struggling. We was two 0 down, and then you get you get the comeback rolling with, with that penalty. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. I the thing I remember the most of that was the half the pitch was frozen. <laughs> So I don't even know how it went ahead, but um, yeah, no, it was it was good because then we had uh, Aiden scored the winner, and nearly ended up getting arrested trying to get back <laughs> into the pitch. But um, it was a good day. I was going to ask you about Aiden. He's a we had him on the show. He's a fucking good guy. Yeah, um, he is. Yeah. He's a real. Is he? I'm trying to think of a term to use without him not being offensive. Is he quite easy to to wind up or? Get get you know a little practical joking on. Aiden, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a he's a bit of a target. Like you know, he's, not, he's not the sharpest tool in the box, like. But um, no, he's a great character, and obviously, probably had his best spell in them two years um, in League One. But yeah, I played with him then again at Portsmouth last year, and he was the exact same. So uh, I still speak to him quite a bit. He's a, he's a good guy. He's good. He's, he's a good lad, mate. He's a good lad. So yeah, you got that, that win. That was. Do you know what? I just remembered the Berry comeback. I actually forgot the uh, when he jumped in the crowd. Trying hey, to get yeah. through. That must have been. No, yeah. I didn't even realise that the Stuart was pulling him back, thinking he was one of the fans. But uh, yeah, just he, had a re- he, just had a replica shirt on. He thought he was one of the fans. Yeah, yeah. Especially the head on him. He probably thought he was one of the fans anyway. Another. Oh, no, uh, oh mate, honestly, another ding dong of a game. In that season, it was the final game of the season. Bristol Rovers away. Yeah, when we right. we slid into the to the fucking, we should have been cemented in there by that point. I don't know whether the cup run sort of slowed that down a bit, but yeah. Bristol Rovers yeah. game. Yeah, it was mental. We were cruising in the game, and then it just they really came back into it. Um, they were dead. Like they had nothing to play for. I think. Um, yeah, we were looking. I think Hutchie pulled off. Great right yeah. Um But yeah, no, that was some 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 game to kind of sum up the season. There was there was just never there was just never a dull moment under Neil Harris. It just never nah. was. And you know what? Like recently, we we had the FA Cup game a couple of weeks ago against Sheffield United. <clears throat> There's nothing against Gary Rowett, but the ground they didn't even open all the sta- all the stands. No, yeah, under New Harris, he just wouldn't have had, like it. Just I'm not saying either one's a better manager or right for us now. Just something about Harris, it was never a dull moment with the, especially with the cup, because he used to go into a cup, believe him, play your strongest side, didn't he? He really rolled yeah. you up for those cup matches. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd have a right go in all the games. To be fair, we we played four four two against Spurs. Uh, <laughs> we probably should have parked the bus a little bit, but um, yeah, no, he was. Trying to, anyone can be anyone really on any day. So um, why not give it a good go? Do you know that way? Yeah, I love that, man. That's what that's what cup football should be all about. Anyway, it's had a cup run aside and and the Berry come back, the Bristol Rovers come back. We're sneaking on the last day. Scunthorpe in the playoffs. The home game was a little bit uneventful, but um, yeah. the away game and another one that yeah for me, game no, just that, that year of that year of Mia Wall for me is just like it's, it's not as. I don't personally think it's as good anymore, even though we're in a higher division. I just, I fucking love them times. Yeah, no, I think that Scunthorpe game was class. Um, 
Moore and Greg's put on a show um, from what they've been doing throughout that season as well. Um, they just complemented each other so well and everything they've done that day worked. Um, yeah, brilliant. Class. Great night as well. Go on. It was a good night after as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what I'm getting? <laughs> yeah. What was it? What was <laughs> Fair enough. What was the... Um... It was, was it seemed like there was a real team togetherness there, and like you, all, you was all actual genuinely mates as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's probably down to the manager as well, um, signing the right characters. Um, there was no bad eggs. Everyone got on with each other. Um, yeah, it was kind of not a band of brothers, but it was there was a lot of friendships within the group. Yeah. Nobody kind of disliked one another and. We, all, we kind of all pulled in the same direction. Who was your closest to in the group? Uh, probably there was a few, like Greg, Morrow, Webby, Chad, uh, Lozman. Like that? Lozman, to be fair. Hutchie's still quite close to him now. It's, um, Elvis is in my youngest class, so I see him nearly every day anyway. So. Oh, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Yeah, he's, a, he's another one, mate. What, what a great signing that was by Neil Harris. Brilliant, yeah. Um, probably up to him and Coop's probably in the top five, ten centre halves in the champ for me, anyway. Yeah, some great, two great signings. You and Skalak, not so much. But um, <laughs> we, get, <laughs> we get back to Wembley, and this time it was a, a feeling of, you know, this is, this, is, this is not the day out now, this is business. And we yeah. did the business. What was it? What was it like to build up to that game? The the the, the mood in the camp. Yeah, um, I think the year before we we kind of went uh, a couple of days before the game to see the stadium. Blah blah blah. Um, this time it was, do you want to go to the stadium? Said, nah, we'll see it when we get there. Um, total focus on the job at hand, and I think. On the disappointment of the year before for myself anyway. Um mm. nobody was gonna take the medal off me. Uh, and yeah, I would have fucking ran through a ball to to win. And we, and we did win, mate. You actually are you are you count that as an assist? You're in the commentary obviously you're like did, did your foot did your other foot sort of go from underneath it? A little bit of little bit of luck there. As, as good as your oh, left one did as good as your left one yeah. was there a little bit of a slip there? Yeah, I think if I didn't slip, it probably would have went back to our own goal. But uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I definitely slipped. But um, as you say, yeah, the rest is history. Um, yeah, still get goosebumps watching the that clip back. Um, Morrow finishing it then. And I think when I slipped, I didn't even get up for when the ball went in the net. I just stayed there. And I was probably crying on the floor. Uh, oh, I, I cried for about a week after that. Just, even talking about it now, it's like it's unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, it's class, yeah. Some, yeah it was better days, mate. <laughs> they were the days. Yeah. Well, it is a really good photo of you as well. Like you, obviously, when when we lift the trophy up, you're down the front with the champagne bottles. Oh yeah, spraying it into the spraying it into the other boys. Yeah, I think might actually might be a picture of that there. <laughs> oh really? Oh, it's there. Look, oh. yeah, mate. Great yeah. forward, great times. That kit as well for me. I love that kit. Yeah, it was cool. I still have them boots actually. I only wore them for the semi final and the final. Oh, really? You've given me that kit, that shirt there. You've given me another version of it. Yeah. Oh, isn't it? Yeah, it didn't fit yeah. though, funny enough. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It did, I still yeah, have, enough. Still have them boots in a sandwich bag, I think, somewhere in the garage. <laughs> I thought you said I got them in like a glass, glass box. Nah. Uh, Where, where's the medal? Where's the winner's medal? It's in my picture. Oh, it's in there. I can't see, mate. Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful, mate. Look at that. Yeah, missus had that done. Nice, nice. So then, obviously, we're back in the championship. And all, all's good again. The first season, we had a right go without really adding too many players, did we? Ben, I think Ben Marshall was one of the ones that stood out for me that came in. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, can, not, not too many changes. What did Harry say? Look, you've got us up. I'm going to give you the chance again. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, is it? Did Sav join? Did Sav come back then? 
Pardon? And George Savile come back then. George Savile, yeah. I think he did. You're right, yeah. Yeah, because we was decent. We, we, you had you in him in centre mid. He used to press high. Gregor Zamora used to split left and right. He made Jed yeah. on one wing and Marshall yeah. on the other. No wonder we was up. Well, no wonder we nearly went back up again. I know. Yeah, I think I think that season was just kind of element of surprise, really. Like teams obviously wouldn't have faced what we were about. Mm. Like that kind of sit off when they kind of were tippy tapping about at the back, and then we'd kind of. We'd be direct and get in their faces then and other times and um, probably shook up a few teams. But yeah, no, that was a, it was a good first season back at the champ and yeah, we had a right goal. Though. Yeah. Well, about Ben Marshall, he, he's been on the show and you, should, you shouldn't do this, but we've never obviously met him. And I used to think he seems like an arrogant prick. Mate, he's hilarious. He's the nicest geezer ever yeah. come on the show. He just, love, he just loves life, basically. And he's not involved playing football anymore. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, that's it, yeah. He played played football probably like he is now. He just I don't think he really cared. He just he had such good ability. Um and at the time we were a perfect fit for him. He was he probably played really up there, probably the best football of his career, probably at home. Short spell. <laughs> that team, talking about that team just didn't oh, I'll tell you what, didn't um Tim Cale come back as well that season, didn't he? Did didn't he? Yeah, Timmy was back, yeah. That's fucking, mate. He, this is Roy the Rover shit, isn't it? Tim, oh, yeah. Tim Kale yeah, was back. Oh, God, man. I saw a, a social clip. I think Byron Webster put it up at the time. And um, Ben Thompson walks in and Tim Kale's there and he has to like say hello to him in front of everyone. Yeah. And he's got like, proper fanboy in. Yeah, yeah. Someone loved him, yeah. He would have licked shit off his shoe for him, like. <laughs> but, uh Nah, yeah, he was he was such a good guy. Um, obviously, he grew up watching his career, um, and not that you're kind of starstruck, but you're kind of in awe of his of the career he had, both internationally and in his um, Everton days. But he was the most down to earth person, so approachable, um, top top person like really really enjoyed the company what was he like in training because he obviously didn't actually play that much but he still sort of again a brilliant new Harris move he sort of got got in amongst the squad people probably yeah. learned, I think people said they learned things from him and what was he like yeah. in training? he still have a bit on training because we never actually saw him really play yeah he obviously he wasn't the player he was but he still had he still had ability you know like his finishing was still really good but Obviously, game time was limited, but yeah, no, he was definitely, definitely gave the place a lift um, mm. in that part of the season. And obviously, him coming back, I said, and one other element sort of kick started a 17 game up being run. Um, I, I actually nearly died in real life at this point, <laughs> so I didn't go to Leeds away when we come back and won 4 3. But I remember watching it on iPhone, and I was, all, I was nearly passing out. That is an absolutely crazy yeah. game, yeah. The, that game sticks out probably the most. Um, well, one of the most in that in my spell in Millwall. Um, yeah, it was mental. Uh, we were winning, then we were losing, and then we ended up winning. And that atmosphere, the way the way their uh, supporters kind of went against them, and then they got behind them, and then the, no the noise when they scored. I think it was three two was well, un unreal. Um then obviously I think Tom Elliott might have scored and then Jed scored the winner, wasn't it? Big T did score. What was he like? So I fucking forgot about him. Yeah, no, he was good. Um hampered with injuries, I think. Probably killed his career. Um he was all actions, you know, like he put his body on the line and it obviously it affected him done his shoulder. I think there's probably not something that he hasn't done. Um I think he's probably injured still at the moment now with something. But um yeah, no, it's the same another good character, good guy, fit in with the dressing room, um, added a little bit when when needed and um yeah, 
can't really say a bad word about him, if you know what I mean. I really enjoy mm. him. He's a good fella. I had, I had a figure that someone said to me, uh, someone in the notes that I know said to me, Jed loves playing with uh, Tom Elliott. Like, loves yeah. playing with him so he can get to the end of his crosses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, probably he does, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Big T was good. He, he, I think he kind of didn't get the plaudits he deserved, you know, the way, but then again, mm. he, didn't play, he didn't play an awful lot, but contributed while well he did. Mm. We we was rolling after that, mate. I think it was seventeen games unbeaten. Yeah, You're seeing all, all the stats on Twitter, if you like, no teams have won more games in a row. And Mia Wall always beating Real Madrid in the stats. And I remember speaking to you actually after there was a game against Brentford at home, and we yeah. beat one nil. We defended really well, but we scored after about I think we scored like after ten seconds, two games on the bounce, and that was the next one. And I think yeah. you put a lovely ball through. I think someone cut it. Or well, you cut it back and someone scored, and you run and, and sit on your scored. knees. Who? Sav was that against Brentford? It was Sav scored, and you run and sit on your knees, and you just kept going. Yeah, and I, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I messaged you on Instagram, and I said you, you was unbelievable. Stay, he was like, yeah, that's what a little mid-season breaks and mobs can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> what was, yeah. was Harris good like that? Did he know how to man manage you at the right times and give you little breaks when when the players needed them? Yeah, I think. Because when we were in League One, obviously it was his first job. Um, we didn't have the advantage of the international breaks um, that often. And then obviously when you come up to the championship, you know, if you don't have any internationals, you still get the breaks. So, um, yeah, he used to give us days off um, where we could spend time with our families and that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no, he did. He's, he's, his man mentioned phenomenal, but really good, even now. You've got to get that in. Get that in. <laughs> um, no, but again, he's another, he's another manager I've heard some players, nothing but good things to say. Ben, ben Marshall used to go, but he was, he was just one of the boys, basically. Yeah. He's like an, an additional player, even though he's in charge of the team. But anyway, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave your current manager out of this. Um, the next season, we, I think probably a little bit of second season syndrome, wasn't it? Not the greatest season. Um, 21st, yeah. just avoiding relegation. I think Rotherham actually got points deducted. Um, yeah, what changed in that second season? Uh, I think, as I said, from the season before, we were probably uh, a team that was unpredictable, obviously new into the league. So I think we kind of got found out a little bit then the second season where we didn't adapt really. Uh, Probably played the same way, and it was probably quite predictable in what we were going to do. Mm, yeah, that we was. Yeah, I mean, it, look, you say it worked for us, didn't it? The two strikers get out to him, getting behind them. But yeah, so we got found out it's, it's very difficult as well. Like you know, sometimes we have to stand still with money wise, and other teams come down or appear and fucking have all this parachute money. It's, it's difficult to fucking keep tabs on them and stick with them. Yeah, that's it. I think. The golf in leagues is ridiculous, like from League Two to League One, even uh, wearing a couple of teams. But from League One to Championships, worlds apart um, in terms of fees paid and on top wages paid. So I think what well, we were obviously at the lower end of the league table in terms of. Mm payments as in what we buy and how much we spend so it's obviously going to attract different kind of players but um seems to be a little bit different now and as i said never a dull moment under neil harris no just you know 14th finish and that's it we nearly get relegated but at the same time we got another mad cut run um can't even actually remember we played in the first or third round uh, do you remember i don't remember is it newport no, I think it was. Yeah. Anyway, fourth round. Another, again, unbelievable night in, in Mill history, especially recently. Memories, uh, Everton, yeah. 3 2. Yeah, that was going on. Was that better for you than the Leicester game? Or it was another no, game? No, the Leicester game was still better. Um, I just yeah. think because, yeah, it was, um, it's hard to compare, really. I think. The Leicester one, because we were probably League One, uh, down to 10 men. Yeah, true. Probably looked like there was no hope for us. 
where then when we played Everton, we were kind of like, oh, we could probably have a go off these, like, do you know what I mean? Um, so not that we expected to win, but we fancied our chances against most teams. Yeah. That, that was actually, I think that was actually on my birthday. Fucking crazy night, mate. Crazy. The noise in there when it gets going. Yeah. Um, Lee Gregory's 1 0, put us 1 0 up. Yeah. George, George Nash had dropped by the next shot, 1 1. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they scored again, didn't they? It was 2 1 up. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. I think Cooper, I think a little bit of hint of hand ball, Cooper scores. Yeah, I see, you yeah. know. And then. Um, the winner, mate, there's a, a video on my channel that's done, that got loads of views, and it's just above you as you're taking that free kick. It was a good one there. Oh, yeah, who scored? Murray Wallace. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, yeah, I think with them boys in there, there's always a chance, like, like, Coops, obviously, size and head and ability speaks for itself. Then Mozart really puts head through a brick wall, so you know, he. And he, he's he's always in and about it anyway. Like he, he he's good at picking up the second ball. Um, but yeah, what what finish? Uh, yeah, scenes scenes after that. Yeah. <laughs> What's he like, Murray Wallace, as a man? I can imagine he's yeah, he's quite he's quite sensible. He's just a machine, isn't he? I really goes he's, running on his day off. Or something, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, he's a machine. Yeah. Um, when he first came, um, I think it was that was that his first season. Well, he, was. Yeah, he, he, he came from Stone uh, I don't know what year he came, but first day in pre season, and we're doing this. I think it's like a 1500 meter run, and it's like balls out. So, Muzza sets off and he's going and going. I'm thinking that this fella's going to blow up like first day, trying to, trying to show off the lads. Oh, he, he was laughing people. Go. Fucking Mo Farrell's world record time. <laughs> and we were like, wow, this fella can shift like he was fly. But yeah, he's um, uh, yeah, he's so he's some professional. Like I hand that to him. Um, every day, he's hundred and ten percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. What's he like in around the training ground? Day stay. I'll come on road. He won't be there for much longer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but, oh, some funny stories about that place. Yeah, he's. Mozzie, he's, he's a quiet lad, um, but can have the banter when when needs be. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a top, top professional. Probably up there with one of the most professional people I've come across. Fair enough, mate, fair enough. Two other players are coming. I just noticed Murray Wallace scored. Two other players that were there at that point as well. Still in the team. One of my favourites, Tom Bradshaw. Yeah. What's he like, Brad? I bet he loves his club right now. I can imagine him. Brad is, yeah, loves it. Loves it. <laughs> And uh, oh. Ryan Leonard as well. Yeah, Lenny, yeah. He's had a horrible time with injuries. Yeah. Uh, just knock back after step back after step back. Um but yeah, when he when he's fit and raring to go, he's uh, not many people get around him like. No. And then obviously in that summer, 2019-20, Neil Harris goes out, probably says to the ball, look, we fell a bit short now, needs a freshen up. So I was about 10 players. Bart comes in, Frank Fielding, uh, Jason McCarthy. Uh, did Conor McLaughlin come in? He's a mate of yours, Conor McLaughlin, isn't he? Did he come in? I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got to sign loads of players. And um, yeah. not long after, Neil Harris resigns. Blew it away. Yeah. Was that a shock um, to you? It was, yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't play in the game. I was on the bench. And... Obviously, the, there was noise from the from the crowd at half time, and then at the end, and I was thinking, I thought, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll get on with it. Um, and then, yeah, he resigned. Um, spoke to us all the next day, and just wished us well, kind of way. He, he didn't want to obviously. Mm. Uh, I think he, he he wanted the club to give someone else the opportunity. I don't think he wanted to be the one to. Uh, for it all to fall on him, but um, I think it was a, the bigger man in the situation. Uh, Mate, you, so many people would have just fucking sat there and gone, "Well, they'd have to sack me. I ain't going anywhere." Do you know what I mean? And it might yeah. not even come to that. We weren't that far into the season, but it just shows the love he had for the club to go. Look, maybe it does. You know, give someone else the chance. 
yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not sure if it was to not to tarnish his reputation or anything, but um, yeah, he just held his hands up and I think he thought maybe it, as far as I can take the group. What's that like as a player when you know you, you got brought in by Holloway, not Harris, but you know, first couple of years didn't go to plan and then Harris comes in, it's going to plan for so long, and you're a bit like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, well, it was. Thing. Not that it was disappointing, it was obviously sad to see him leave, but I knew obviously the reasons why um, he, he made the decision. Um, but yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't nice to see him go um, after all he'd done for us over the couple of years. Yeah, and then, you know, managerial, like, so you, you played um, just short of 300 games for me, or it's the same with managers and players, and they, You'll, you'll find it hard to do that again at a club, like, you know, any player or any manager, because the changes are so quick now, aren't they? Yeah. You know, when, think... when Harris leaves, you know, like to try and get another manager in first time round to, to get the formula right doesn't usually happen, does it? As we see him, like, teams like Chelsea and United, yeah. wherever. Uh, yeah, it's a, t- it's a tough industry, I think, to be in. Um, it's obviously a results business. And as you've seen in, in the Premier League or whatever, if the results aren't there after. Or even five games, managers are kind of looking over the shoulder. So, um, yeah, it's tough, obviously, for a club to pick the right person. Yeah. And then Neil, um, Neil Harris leaves. Gary Rowett comes in, steadies the ship, carries on pretty much from when Neil Harris left off. Different types of managers, but points wise. And then not long after that, COVID hits. Yeah. What's what's that like for you? I mean, I suppose people might be watching game. Well, we all didn't go work, mate. But what's it like for you, especially at such an active job? You don't play from March to June. Yeah, um, it was mental. I think I was probably the same as you. You weren't allowed to leave your house. Um, yeah. Then obviously the others were all having parties and that. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think. Mad time in my life, when in everyone's life, fucking wiping the groceries down when they came home. Uh, <laughs> you know, washing your hands every time you fucking touch the door or anything like that. Well, yeah, it, it is. It was a lot different. Obviously, we and then we um we, so we, we, we came back. What was it like when you came back and there was no fans? That was, Again, must have been a strange environment to play in. Yeah, it was so, it was crap. Um, obviously, the fixtures had to get played, and that they were the rules that the there was no fans to be at the ground. But I think the way that we kind of played, we play with the fans. Um, obviously, it's cliche that they're the twelfth man, but that's what we needed at the time. So, uh, yeah, the atmosphere was brutal. I, t- I remember one of the games, um, it was Derby uh, at home. Um, I was, we had to, we rented out to sit on the bench. We had to sit in the stand. But we all had to sit away from each other. So there was three seats between each person. But yet we spent that day all together and we were outside. So I was, fucking weird like but um <laughs> yeah. Barbie at home um I think one of their young lads Sylvie or he scored a hat trick anyway. Yeah. But as we all said to one another if the fans were there, there was no way he was gonna be able to be comfortable enough to perform the way he did, if you know what I mean, because yeah, yeah. the home fans not that they get on other players, but they intimidate other teams so they don't make kind of the same decisions when they're out of their comfort zone. So, obviously, I'm not saying that he's a bad player, but um, that wouldn't yeah. happen. I think, if, uh, no, he's, we'll, we'll go back to that Leicester game, which you said got stands out to you. That Chilwell, the left back, he didn't want to come and take throws, did he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> prime example. Yeah. And in a, a very strange turn in your Millwall career, on the 28th of October, <laughs> Gary Rowett gets COVID and you and Alex Pierce manage the team at Preston in a 2 0 win. Yeah. Unbeaten, didn't you? Unbeaten record, 100%. No, because we lost the second one. Oh, we had two games. Was it two games? 
Yeah, we had uh, Huddersfield at home. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, we lost that one like three 0 didn't we? Or something like that. Yeah, that was that wasn't our fault though. <laughs> <laughs> How does that come about? Or did you get the call saying, "Look, some, do they say, look, someone's got to do it, or you two no. are doing it?" Yeah, he asked us two to do it. Um, we had a, a Zoom in his office. He was at home. Um, Adam Barra had, uh, I think, he'd taken the game beforehand. Right. And then Ads got COVID as well. That's right, yeah. So we had to do a Zoom in the staff office, me, Piercy, with uh, the gaffer. And he said it to us, basically. I think Joe Carnell, I don't know if he had it at the time, or he set it up. But, um, yeah, that's how we found out. But, and then, so what did he give you? Obviously, he would have given you instructions. What? Was he on his iPad in the, in the dressing room before the game or anything like that? Uh, no, I had an earpiece um, on the phone with him. Oh, uh, really? it, it, no, it wasn't like constant. It was, I'd get a phone call on the bench, so I'd answer it and it'd be him watching it. Uh, just saying, saying what? That must, have been, to, that must have been torture for him. If you're, you know I mean? you're watching your team and you can't, you're not there. Yeah, I'd say it was tough, yeah. So, 2-0 uh, win big, big Kenza Hall was on the score sheet that night it was about time he turned off <laughs> yeah. do you know what he, when he first came I was like oh, he looks really promising and he was good he just didn't give a fuck did he he did not give a fuck uh, <laughs> yeah I think there's a player in there somewhere but he'd do well to find it like I heard he just didn't like, he just didn't speak to him. It, like, no one spoke to him in training. Like, he just wouldn't he'd go even say hello to anyone. He'd just turn up, train, and fuck off again. I was like trying to get blood out of his thumb. <laughs> you'd, you'd try to be nice, welcome him, and ask him questions, and he'd answer the question, and that'd be it. He's like, uh, how are you doing? How's the family? He's like, yeah, good. And that's it. <laughs> What's it like running a, running a team with Alex Pierce? We know, obviously, players sometimes keep themselves to themselves. You're, you're a little bit of a closed book, obviously, which is fair enough like on socials and things like that. But Alex Pierce is openly nuts. The club always promote it as well. Like, What's he like day to day? Is he like that all the time? Yeah, he's a fucking character. Uh, yeah, he's one of the funniest guys I know. Um, brilliant. Like... That that Preston game as well. He uh, he was giving Alex Neil a bit, um, and Alex Neil was raging. So went to do like the handshake at the end, and he 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 had words for him in his ear. Like you know, it was fucking funny. But in Piercy's eyes, that's one nil him. Like you know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, no, it was unbelievable. Yeah, he's he's something else. He is something else. Yeah, he's a he's a hell of a character, hell of a character. But he's a great captain as well. So, at this point, you you've been manager for a couple of games. But previous to that, in August, you'd been appointed as a coach at the club. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah. So at the end of that season, you then you left the club, which surprised me. Um, yeah. Um... Well, what happened there? Because obviously, I was thinking, oh, this is fucking great. Are like, you going to be around it now? Yeah, I think the opportunity came around um, in the summer before my last season. Um, I spoke to the gaffer uh, and he asked, would I be interested in it? Um, seeing, obviously, the other side of it. Uh, and yeah, I, I thought it was, a, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Um, and as well, like, I think what kind of stood out the most was he seen me still as a player first and then as a coach. So I wasn't overly doing an awful lot of stuff um, coaching-wise. It was more learning. Um, but, yeah, no, it was, it was a great insight into, I think, how hard the staff work that I'd never have realised um, if mm. I hadn't had the opportunity, um, yeah, no, just the the detail and the planning that goes on behind the scenes, uh, the hours that they put in, 
where we turn up, have a breakfast, train, lunch, and then fuck off home. They're yeah. there before, before we even get there and long after we leave. Um, yeah, it's more of a, probably a, a 24-7 kind of job from the staff's point of view, um, which I'd never known. And I think the probably the lessons I learned through um, having that role was not copying but kind of taking note of the way that the gaffer worked um picking his brain on things and uh, kind of getting an insight into what kind of coach i want to be um that's what i want to do when i finish football yeah you think you would looking to get into coaching yeah definitely yeah management or just coach uh i think you'd probably want to be the best though whatever you do so um I'd want to coach for a good while anyway, just to gain more experience and then probably dip my toe into management. Yeah, so it was a shame, obviously, when you end up leaving the club. I was, I was surprised when it happened because I thought I was naturally going to be a player and then sort of wind down eventually and become a coach. But you left the club and... Um... Yeah, I think the the um, the option to continue playing uh, wasn't there for me, um, which I still wanted to do. Um, so we, we had, we had a conversation about, I said, listen, I, I still want to play. And he said, that's fine. Um, so obviously I had to look for pastures elsewhere. Um, yeah. I think if I, if I had the option probably to play for another year, I would have more than happily retired, um, playing for Millwall. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, no, I think yeah. obviously like you, you're settled in it. Look, from what read between eyes, you're settled in the area. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, been at the club a long time. You don't you don't need to move on, really, do you? But I'll give you yeah. saying you don't want to jump into coaching if you still feel you can play. You want to play for as long as you can. Yeah, I'd, I'd spoke to people that had finished before me, and they said play for as long as you can. Um, at the time, I was only thirty four. Um, when I left Millwall, so. I felt like I still had a, like a couple of years left to play, and I think, yeah, probably I wanted to finish it on my terms. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fair enough, mate. And then you obviously leave the club, go to Portsmouth, and then the yeah. cup draw allows you to come back, mate. You got a fucking fantastic reception, and rightly so when you did. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. Um, to be fair, I'd missed the. We played their first league game um, the Saturday just before, and I pulled out on the warm up. I'd actually done the back. We were on the bus for eight hours to Fleetwood. Uh, so well, I missed that. that. Yeah, and then I was thinking, oh, I'm going to miss the Millwall game. But um, yeah, I don't think I would have missed it for anything. Yeah. Just gone on for the What if you had to have done? Just gone on for the first minute and then take me off now. I'll have I'll have me round the yeah, was, uh, It was just, yeah, the reception I got was phenomenal. Um, yeah, it was for me and my family as well. Um, it, it was a proud moment to be mm. acknowledged by the fans I played for for seven and a half years or whatever it was. Yes, mate, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so you scored 22 goals in your time at the club. I was, I was actually having trouble remembering them earlier. I remember an absolute rocket at Birmingham. Yeah. I remember, obviously, the goal against Forest and the penalty against Berry. So, what, what goals stand out to you? Uh, you must have scored a few with that wand. No, I, sc um, I scored one. I scored a few against Forest. Um, I'd sc I think I scored... It was at home. It was in the run when we, I think we were on that good run of 17 games and within the team we'd scored uh, loads of early goals so we were trying to beat each other's early goals record if you know what I mean oh right yeah, yeah. But, uh, normally I was obviously sitting in the middle of the uh, midfield and I'd let Sav just go on blah 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 so we played Forrest at home and I think there was about a minute or two gone into the game and I thought, right, fuck it, I'm running forward here. So I said, Sav, wait here. 
and it went to Marshy out on the left and he crossed it. And I remember going in with my head uh, at the front post and heading it in. And I, I think it, it took the record off the lads um, for the early goal scored in the game. But um, <laughs> that, that was one of the one of the goals I remember quite well. Um, scored a few headers. Uh, scored one away at Forest uh, with two two, and the the floodlights cut out. We were losing two 0 I remember that. Yeah, that's when Gregor scored right at death and got right in him and Marlon Romeo right in their fans, wasn't it? Yeah, the fans rang over the fence going "fuck off." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a good one as well. Yeah. Always ask at the end as well for your your most memorable. I know you've had a long time at the club, but your most memorable moment at Millwall. Where do we start? Um, I think the one that stands out the most is probably the playoff uh, final. I think when the fans ran on the pitch after, and it wasn't a thing that you kind of done at Wembley, the, the home of football. But I remember I have a picture, I don't know, I have someone sent it to me. Um, and there was some fan, he just jumped up into my arms and I remember hugging him. I don't even know who the lad is, but that's probably one of the memorable ones. Um, when they ran on to celebrate with us uh, at the end of the game. Um, well, the cup runs, amazing. Um, yeah, I think there's not many that I wouldn't. You could be here all night. I would be able to go through so many good memories. Like, yeah, if you could go back and relive one game, you're saying it'd be that Leicester game. Uh, nah, the playoff final. Playoff yeah. final. Yeah. It was, Unbelievable, it was, mate. Yeah. Because it was, last a late, it was a late, it was a late dinner as well. Yes, stuff dreams are made of, mate. Yeah. Last question I always ask this at the end. If you could go out tomorrow with three of your old Millwall teammates, you can do whatever you want, game of golf, night out, which three are you taking with you? Um, Jed. Yeah, he, I'd bring Jed. <laughs> bring Jed. Um, who else? Oh, do we have more than three? <laughs> yeah, obviously, it's, it's got to be a limit. It's the rules. Right. Who's, like the, who's like the craziest one on the night out? Probably Alex Pierce. It'd be Jed Piercy. And then... I still got on quite well with Mason Bennett, so I'd probably pick him. <laughs> but, no, he's a he's a he's a random random dude, but he's your mate, so I say. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm still friends. I speak to him probably. We ring each other probably once a week. Um, he drive when he's driving in. Uh, so we'd stay on the phone for about half an hour, just chatting shy. But, uh, That's the most I, unlikely partnership in the world for me. That Mason Bennett and Sean Williams. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's a, he's a good friend of mine, so yeah, I'd probably say him. Oh, brilliant, mate. Well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure for having you on. Thanks for giving me your time. No, really appreciate it. Thank you. Top man, mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bud. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.